Paul does not make clear why the apparent, whether the appearances were physical or visionary, the Greek text, folks, is entirely ambiguous on this point. More importantly, we know nothing of the reliability of any of the so-called witnesses. How reliable were Peter or James? How do we know that the 500, if they really existed, did not suffer a mass hallucination? What then about Paul's eyewitness testimony? As T.H. Huxley noted in a classic essay, if we accepted all of the eyewitness reports of miracles from old texts, we would be credulous indeed. Is Paul then particularly credible? On the contrary, Paul himself states that he was given to ecstatic visions. In 2 Corinthians 12, Paul tells us of being caught up as far as the third heaven, verse 2, and not knowing whether he was in the body or out of it, verse 2 repeated in verse 3. He reports that he was caught up into paradise, verse 4, and that he heard words so secret that no human lips may repeat them, verse 4. Clearly, this is an account of a mystical vision. Why not conclude that Paul's experience of the risen Christ was of a similar kind? Now, could they, however, have been hallucinations, as Dr. Parsons suggests? I think not. Number one, hallucinations cannot explain the physicality of the appearances. They were physical, as narrated in the Gospels. Two, the number and the various circumstances of the appearances preclude hallucinations. Jesus wasn't just seen one time, but many times. Not just by one person, but many people. Not on just one occasion, but under many occasions. Not just by individuals, but by groups. The hallucination hypothesis just can't be stretched to accommodate that diversity. Thirdly, the disciples weren't psychologically disposed to hallucinate. They had no expectation of seeing Jesus alive again. And I'll say something more about that in a minute. Fourthly, hallucinations would never have led to belief in Jesus' resurrection. It would at most have led them to believe that Jesus had been assumed into heaven, and that's where they saw him, in Abraham's bosom, not that he had been literally raised from the dead. And in any case, hallucinations, fifthly, cannot explain the empty tomb. As for the experiences, the appearances of Jesus, Dr. Craig said that I deny these. I do not. I do not deny that the disciples had an experience which they interpreted, which they took as being an appearance of Jesus. I think they probably did. Well, how do we account for that? How, how can we say that they could possibly have had such an, an experience? Well, once again, he very far too quickly and dismissively uh, disregards the uh, explanation of hallucinations. I was just simply reading the Encyclopedia of Psychology recently. It says that one-eighth to two-thirds of normal human beings experience waking hallucinations. Now, one of the standard characteristics of many hallucinations is that they seem extremely real, very, very real. In fact, there are classes of hallucinations. For instance, there are hypnagogic, hypnopompic hallucinations, which are experienced, and the people who experience these hallucinations almost always say, yes, it seems so real. Consider Whitley Strieber, the one who wrote Communion about who he was supposedly abducted by space aliens. Supposedly, he was asleep in his farm in Vermont and the gray aliens came through the walls, abducted him, took him aboard their spaceship, and did terrible things to him. Okay, Whitley Strieber says it was real. I saw him on the Johnny Carson show. Johnny Carson said, do you think you might have dreamed this? He said, no, it seemed absolutely real. Okay, so very many of these experiences, which occur, as I say, to a very considerable segment of the population, seem extremely real at the time. What causes hallucination? Well, the Encyclopedia of Psychology that I was reading says extreme depression and extreme experience of loss, of alienation. Surely the disciples, after the death of their leader, as Dr. Craig said, uh, would have been experiencing precisely those severe psychological symptoms that would induce such hallucinations. Now, Dr. Parsons in the last speech says, I do agree that the disciples experienced appearances of Jesus, but I would say that these were just hallucinations. But again, I want to recur to the fact hallucinations can't explain the physicality of these appearances as they occurred, the number and the variety. It's not just one UFO abductee. It's groups of people, numbers of people, unbelievers, skeptics, believers who saw Jesus, Hallucinations can't accommodate that diversity. I also argued that it wouldn't have led to belief in Jesus' resurrection because the Jewish beliefs about the afterlife said that the resurrection only occurred after the end of the world, not within history. So they wouldn't have come to believe that. Rather, given their Jewish frame of thinking, what they would have believed had they hallucinated is God has translated Jesus into heaven, into paradise, and there he's appearing to us. If they had a hallucination, that's what a Jew would believe not the contrary to Jewish thinking belief that he had been raised from the dead. 
Um, and again, then of course, hallucinations cannot explain the empty tomb. You have to cook up some independent hypothesis to explain the empty tomb after you've tried to use hallucinations. 